Hello, welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Uh, we're going to be playing the map Gold Rush today, which is a new map added in 2020 to the Horn of the Abyss fan expansion. Speaking of 2020, pretty much the whole world is in lockdown right now, uh, myself included, and I don't currently have access to my normal microphone, so you may notice that my voice sounds probably a bit flatter than usual. Um, I hope it's not too much of a problem, but I thought I would start a new series rather than continue with some old series, just so it's a bit less jarring. Uh, as always, at the start of any map, you can check the link to the playlist in the description uh, in order to watch the whole thing in one go if we don't finish it in one part, which I'm assuming we won't. And let's just have a quick read of this. By the Order of the Monarch, you have arrived at the border of the Three Kingdoms. You must gain control over the gold mines of the disputed island. Using the resources you brought, you built a fortress for further operations. Time to saddle your faithful horse. If you fail to take over the gold mines within two months, or worse still, the gold mines fall under control of other kingdoms, your head will roll. The royal executioner will gladly take it to amuse the impoverished peasants, even if it does not add a single coin to the treasury. That's fine, we started with no resources anyway. Um, so if you're a long-time viewer of the channel, you'll probably be aware that I, I like to have each series uh, dedicated to a different hero, and in this case we're going to be using Rissa as our dedicated hero. Obviously Rissa is better as a secondary hero with the plus one Mercury per day. Um, that is much better suited to a secondary hero than a primary hero, but um, I think we're going to be fine either way. So let's go ahead and use her as a main today. And let's just go and explore this one. I have already done a bit of a test run of this map, so I know it reasonably well. Okay, that's not going to help us too much. Yeah, I know the map pretty well. Um, it's a map where you have to flag the, I think it's four mines in the middle of, of the map. Obviously, that's been explained already. Um, but those are quite difficult to open up. Ah, oh, we've actually got a rival tower player. And Giselle, who was also added in 2020 to the Horn of the Abyss expansion. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting map because you have two months to finish it off in game time, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else it would work. But yeah, if we visit this, I don't know what it's called, Heart of the Magi, um, it will reveal the center of the map. And if we have a little look, we can actually see all four of the relevant gold mines right here, which we need to take over. So this one obviously just requires us to find and visit the light blue tent. Uh, this one requires us to fight off some ancient behemoths. And then these two both require us to complete quests, which if I recall correctly, both revolve around having a lot of spare resources. So that's one potential way to win the map. The other way is of course just to take out the two rival players, um, which may indeed end up happening. We'll see how it plays out. Now let's just gather up as many resources as we can because we are currently very poor. And we're up to 2,900 which is enough to potentially build the town hall or alternatively recruit Halon. Uh, of the two, if we go to the south we can see lots of gremlins need to be fought down there. Um, we can't buy Halon and upgrade his creatures at the same time, I don't think. I didn't actually realise we start off with an upgraded workshop, so I've kind of shot myself in the foot here by not upgrading my gremlins straight away. Uh, but given that we can actually upgrade them from the start, I'm actually going to go ahead and recruit Halon and hope that we can afford to do this, which we can. And we've got another 100 left in the bank. Uh, so 32 gremlins going up against lots of gremlins. That should be completely fine. Let's just split these golems. And we'll fight these off. Hopefully, can do it without any losses. So it looks like they're actually going to go down to the bottom to take on the lowest golem, and that's completely fine. Go ahead and waste some of their time. They're going to come a little bit closer. Hopefully, put themselves in range. Okay, not yet. That's fine. I don't think we need to take any losses here. Okay, they're doing quite a lot of damage. Um, this is a little bit risky. I should be able to just about move away. Might actually be better off sending the gargoyles down. So 
So there is a chance I could take out either stack. I'm going to go for the bottom stack because I know that for sure they can reach me, although actually I get morale. Um, I think these can reach me too. I'm going to send this down, although I think this is completely safe now. 9 HP should be completely fine, plus we get another go, that's all good. 180 experience. Um, something I should bring up is that I know that the HD mod has just added uh, a new update, which brings a turn queue. Um, I've decided not to install that for this particular playthrough, but uh, I will probably start using that pretty soon, because I, I quite like the idea. We'll visit the Fountain of Youth, uh, we'll pick up some more gold, and we can just about get here too, so that gives us 4,000 to spend. Let's go ahead and get the Town Hall. And that's about as much as we can do this turn. Rissa can potentially take the fight with the Wolf Riders, but um, I think we're better off not doing that. Let's just pick up the ore and start moving back to the castle. So you will notice that instead of having the usual sawmill plus ore pit that you would get uh, on most maps, you do just get them as artifacts instead. I'm not really sure why they've done it that way. Uh, it's not a particularly unique map that would make that necessary, but um, I guess it's a bit different to the usual, so fair enough, I suppose. But, uh, I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't upgrade these gremlins. I mean, I didn't know at the time it was an option. Perhaps if we go back to Tirith. Let's see if we have enough movement points. I'm not sure that we do. But let's pass over everything we can. Take Halon back to the town, upgrade the gremlins, and we can probably also get the parapet or indeed the golem factory. Uh, of the two, I think parapet's going to be more useful for now, so let's go ahead and get that, and let's get as many of these as we can, which we can just about afford all of them. We have the perfect amount of gold for that. Uh, we can't get back to Rissa, but that's okay. We're just going to spend a few movement points. And while we're here, in fact, we might as well just open this up. Imps are going to try and run away. That's fine. Let's take the fight. Sure, we don't need to take any losses. Yeah, that's going to be completely fine. There we go. And now we'll head back. So the Whites are obviously a tougher fight than the Wolf Riders. Even so, it's pretty tempting. But no, I think we'll go for the Wolf Riders first, because we can potentially give Rissa some stronger units next turn. We can give her a few more Golems. Don't get morale, that's good. Should be pretty safe now. So yeah, my feeling with this map is that it's actually pretty likely that will end up just taking out the two opponents instead of finishing it off. The kind of intended way, which is to obviously take all four of the central mines. But we'll have to wait and see. Ah, damn. Okay. I'm sure we could have prevented that somehow, but never mind. Okay, so we got some wood. Uh, we can actually take the fight with the whites this turn, but I don't really see any massive reason to do that. Let's just end the turn. Situation turned out to be even worse than expected. You will have to make do despite severe shortage of resources, as there are no developed mines in these lands. You'll have to rely on the scouts' cunning and their sticky fingers. Speaking of them, the scouts tell us that in place of the derelict sawmills and quarries, carts full of resources can be found. It would be nice to capture them. I think that is uh, pretty obvious by now. So we can probably just leave Halon to pick the stuff up. We're not desperately short of resources. Um, but before we do so, let's have a look if we can actually afford to do anything in the town. So we do have potentially 14 more gremlins to pick up. Let's go ahead and do that. And Halon, I think, has a bit of a choice between dropping the things off for Rissa or picking up some more resources, uh, potentially recruiting a few more stone golems. I think we need the golem factory before we get the 
Mage Tower, which yes we do, but we also need the Mage Guild, so we're not going to get Mages anytime soon. With that in mind, I think we should just go straight to Rissa, pass over the Gremlins, because we're going to need all the help we can get. And let's go ahead and take the next fight against the Whites. And if we can reduce the losses a little bit, that would be great. I'm going to play it the same way. Uh, you guys can't reach us. I can reach my smaller stacks though, which is not ideal. Let's see if I can bait them. Well, they're pretty much dead to be fair. And we'll just move these away, keep them safe. Shoot these. Move these down because they're pretty tanky. Oh crap, they actually got the kill. Surprised they did that much damage. They're not one of the best level 3 creatures rates. I'm slightly worried about getting hit by this thing, but should be completely fine now. Take these out before they can do any more damage, and finish these off like that. And we've now opened up the way. Um, I think we don't really need to go and pick this up with Rissa. Let's preserve her movement points, pick it up with Halon instead, and send Rissa potentially to the west. If we look at our other options, we can go to the south, take on the Oceanids, open up the water wheel. Um, we can also visit the portal, which should take us right here into the center. Um, and there is quite a lot of resource lying around. There's a grave there and another grave there, both of which can be reached. Um, only have to win the fight against the halflings in order to get to those. Um, so what I could potentially do is, before the end of the week, I could try to recruit Oris. And she should have just enough to win the fight against the halflings, uh, which enables us to keep Rissa nice and safe, um, because obviously if we send Rissa into the center, it could be hard to bring her back. You can actually bring them back by moving north along the path uh, and visiting the town gate right here. That's the main way of getting back, but it should be a fair bit to explore in this area. Um, I can't remember exactly what. I did actually do a bit of a, a test run, as I've already mentioned, but um, I mostly played as the, the kind of southern character, which spawns right here at the bottom, obviously. So I'm not quite as familiar with this starting location. I'm going to go ahead and take on the boars. And we'll see what the witch hut can teach us. Once again, I'm going to try and preserve the gargoyles if at all possible. These guys are going to come forward, they don't get morale, that would have really screwed us over if they did. And I'm pretty sure they're in range. So let's actually risk sending these forward. I think if we put them here, they're going to be forced to attack us, which yes they are, and we actually do lose one there, so that's kind of bad. Um, it's potentially not a big issue because stone golems are obviously not the greatest of creatures. They are kind of just a bit too slow to carry around on a main hero, but um, even so that's kind of unfortunate. Let's defend with these, just in case we get attacked. And these guys are relatively healthy, I think I'm going to go for the attack. Should be able to tank one or two in response, and then these guys will pretty nicely weaken the boars. So did just lose the one golem, I'm not sure if that's better or worse than what the AI managed, but I think it's okay either way. Um, obviously another thing that's been added to Horn of the Abyss at the start of the year is uh, Mysticism is now actually a pretty decent skill. Uh, providing 5 or 10 spell points per day, depending on whether it's basic or advanced. And then once you get it to expert, it's 15 spell points per day, um, which is pretty significant and actually means I should be using Magic Arrow a bit more than I currently am. Uh, I'm now recovering 10 spell points per day, which on day 3 is, uh, is not bad at all. I actually do quite like it now. I've heard a few people argue that it's not the best, even with uh, the changes they've made to it, but in my opinion it's, it's a pretty worthwhile skill now. Uh, the option of learning Scholar, I think I'll pass on that. And uh, I wonder if I can scare these off, because I don't really want to fight them. They are guarding a few extra resources, which we could definitely make use of. Do need some gold pretty badly. But can't actually reach any. Can reach the water wheel. 
think we're going to have to do that either way. That at least gives, gives us the option of uh, building a market, although it looks like we actually started off with one. In that case, I think I'm going to trade a few resources just to get us up to 1,000. And that gives us the option of the blacksmith. Then we just need the major guild and we can get the city hall. I uh, could also go for the lookout tower just to know exactly what's in our starting area, um, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Go ahead with the blacksmith instead. And I don't think we're going to recruit Clancy, but yeah, could potentially go for Oris. And turn there. Seeing the difficult situation with resource deposits in the region, the king launched a special procedure to build a warehouse in your town to which supplies will be arriving every day. Tirith has built a resource silo. Okay, that's pretty handy. Much earlier than you'd get it normally as well, so... It's good to have. But 1,000 in the bank, that's not really enough to do anything in the town. I think we are just going to have to fight this with what we currently have. If we can scare them off, that'd be perfect, but unfortunately we are going to have to take the fight. I will try and bait them into shooting the gargoyles instead. And that's going to help. And just to be safe, let's go ahead and throw out the first magic arrow. I always thought gargoyles couldn't get morale. That's the first time I've seen that happen. Because they're not... They're not like golems, but they're not meant to be living creatures either, so I'm a bit confused by that. I'm not surprised. Okay, so we are going to take a few losses of the gremlins, but that should be the end of it. Can you guys reach? No, okay. So we're going to have to get hit by one of these stacks. Obviously we'd rather go with the seven. are all healthy. 14 HP, so we'll keep them safe. Knock these out. And these will finish them off. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Did lose 6 gremlins, but it's probably worth it for a bit of extra ore and gold from the campfire. Uh, we can also go west, take on the trogs. Lots of good stuff guarded by a pack of magi. I don't think we're going to be able to take that fight anytime soon. But we definitely should take every bit of gold we can. Let's send Halon up to pick up the campfire. And... Could potentially leave some of the units with him. To be fair, I don't think we're really going to need the golems right now. And they are going to slow down our movement points, so let's leave them with Halon. Take on the trogs. Actually, you want to join us? Okay, I'll accept that. I can use them as a nice bit of fodder. And we will continue to move to the west. Can just about afford uh, an extra hero. If we want to go all the way to the south and go through the portal, which I think is going to be worth it. It will stop us from building this turn. But I think it's a, a worthwhile trade-off. And I'm assuming that Oris is just about good enough to take on the halflings. Can't visit the water wheel. Gonna have to pass straight through that. If the Fountain of Youth, though, I think that's going to be worth it. I think the extra movement points gained should make up for the ones lost. Um, is this... Yeah, it's a Battle Mage, so she does start off with... Protection from air. Okay, that's not going to help. Kind of a shame. I think in that case, I'll ignore the Garden of Revelation, just move straight to the south. And uh, it looks like we're going to have access to a few more gnolls, if we want some gnolls. Not ideal, but it's better than nothing. An open behemoth crag, that's very unexpected. I don't think we can really win that fight. 
75 of these. I'm pretty sure it's... I can't actually remember if it's one behemoth or more than one. That's uh, quite important to know. That's definitely very tempting though. Let's just keep moving towards it. Uh, we should definitely go to the stables if we can. And we have no way of building anything in the town this turn, so let's just end it there. Still got a few days left of the week, so that's good. Go ahead and pick this up. And before we go straight through the portal, let's see if we can pick up anything else on our way. So there is a bit to the west here, but I think we'll ignore all that. Try and go straight to the middle, because there is a lot that we can pick up here. Uh, we'll go for these first, just because they're right next to us. And... Let's see what we've got in the town. So we've got Jedi. That's quite interesting because if we recruit Jedi and send him to the Witch Hut, uh, we can potentially start passing around the Resurrection skill at some point. Or spell, I should say. Let's go ahead and recruit him. Very expensive, but I think worthwhile. We can, of course, visit all this stuff. Okay, we can actually pick up Scholar straight away from the level up, but obviously I think we'll we'll go past the Witch Hut anyway, so let's ignore that for now. Start going that way, and let's see who's new in the town. Agent the Beholder Specialist, that's not really going to be worth recruiting, I think. But we can obviously send more than one hero through the teleporter here. It depends how much we open this up. As you can see, we can go to the south, I think. If we just pick up that bit of sulfur there, we should be able to go straight through. So there's potentially an argument for sending more than just the one hero through. So I might actually go ahead and recruit Clancy, but we'll see next turn. Or we could just risk it. Because it's pretty much a guarantee that we're going to open this up, and once we do, I think Clancy should actually pay for himself. Just send him straight in that direction. Obviously if something's gone horribly wrong and there's not actually a way through, uh, then we can just not send him through the teleporter next turn, we can just send him to the west instead, pick up a few gnolls. And uh, if I've somehow massively underestimated the halflings, um, we might end up needing to do that in order to break through. Finish them off with a few gnolls. Okay, so there's two Null Huts. All of Sins for some Gogs, that's not going to be worth going for. So it looks like the creature dwellings here are not going to be themed based on our town, so we could just have a bit of a... a bit of a hodgepodge collection of units here. I'm not sure it's really going to be worth pursuing that though. Should be able to build something in the town, let's go ahead and get the Mage Guild, and let's see if we can get enough gold next turn to build the City Hall. And I don't know if I should go for this, this feels kind of ridiculous. A few behemoths. I think I could beat one. I just... I really should not risk that, that could go horribly wrong. Could lose our entire army. So we're just going to pass on that, take on the zombies instead. Fairly happy to lose the trogs. And you can see we've got all of our spell points back. But I don't think we'll need to use any here. Work this out correctly. Okay, so we can't get away from these. And go down to here. And they're going to take the bait, so that's good.
There we go. Basic logistics, that's nice to have early on. And let's go ahead... Take on the dwarves first, I think. Loop around that way. That way we can pick up the scholar before we get to the Redwood Observatory. And while we're here, we might as well finish off the trogs. Don't get morale, we shouldn't take any losses. There we go. Is it worth spending our last thousand just on getting a new skill? I think it is. Especially with mysticism, we don't really need to go for knowledge. And wow, they want to join us too. Okay. This keeps happening to me in Hota for some reason. I don't remember it happening quite so often in Shadow of Death. But those are going to be really nice, really tanky, um, and they're not quite as slow as you might think. They're still 5 speed, which is just as fast as our gremlins. They're not going to slow us down. There's actually another portal here too. Plus one attack skill, that's nice. Quite some walking dead too. Sanctuary, if someone comes and attacks us, I don't think that's going to happen, but still. I think I'd ideally send Halon over here first. Could certainly risk him going through the portal. I don't think the dwarves are guarding the portal, but it might be. So there's some more Magi. If they had joined me, that'd be great. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I do wonder about the Behemoth Crag. Maybe hit it day seven. Might be a little bit over ambitious. Could also throw away a hero just to scout it. It's tempting. I think we'll go this way for now. Because, yeah, we do have to fight the dwarves in order to open up the monolith. Actually, come with a few battle dwarves. Okay, that's fine. Should be able to bait them out with the trucks. So I can go for Magic Arrow. Obviously, they have a pretty high chance of resisting it. This guy's 20%, these guys 40%. I think it's pretty safe to go for it against the normal dwarves. And of course, um, we will be getting 10 spell points back at the end of the turn anyway, so it should be pretty safe. Okay, we've got low morale now that we've got three different types of creatures. That could be an issue. Might need to sacrifice the trogs. If we missed a gremlin turn against the behemoths, that would be a complete disaster. Can't stop these guys from hitting us, so let's just go ahead and lure them away. As we're actually pulling the dwarves back, okay, so this is going to be fine. We're not going to take any serious losses. Okay, totally fine with that actually. How many more shots have we got? We've got half our shots left, so we're going to be completely fine. There we go. Okay, so we've opened that up. Can potentially go through it next turn. I would probably prefer to send Halon through there instead. Um, he's not actually got a great way through here. I have to fire off some archers. Can he make it to the Redwood Observatory? He's going to take two turns just to get that far. Okay. 
It could be a little bit difficult, but I think we are making some solid progress. Let's have a look at Oris. So yeah, if we look at this, I think we should be able to... Mm, it's kind of borderline. I think we should be able to poke past the Wyverns there without actually having to fight them. And we can then do a little bit more exploring. This fight could be a little bit more awkward. Try splitting these up. Um, unfortunately, the lack of actual decent spells means I'm not hugely confident about this. I can perhaps bring a few gnolls. Might feel slightly better about it. There are actually loads of gnolls here, but I think if we want to break through this turn, we should probably just go for it now. Let's give this a try. This could be a mistake. Oh dear, okay. That's not good. Ah, this is massive crack in the middle too. This could all be really bad. Okay, this might be a mistake. Okay, they're gonna go for the orcs, that's fine. You guys just do as much damage as you can. These guys are so slow, it's going to take them forever to get across. Ah, they've probably got... They've actually got 24 shots each. They're going to take massive losses just trying to get across. I don't want to screw over my own guys here. I'm going to send you to the top instead. Actually get morale, that's good. Unfortunately, that does mean he's probably going to get shot to pieces next turn. can actually go to the middle. Obviously would be worthwhile. I'm going to go for these just so we don't take as much damage in retaliation. Try and hold out as long as we can. Although actually, these guys would have blocked them anyway, so that might have been a bit of a mistake. Okay, so we're going to take one full shot. They get luck. They take out three wolves in one shot. That sucks, but I think this should be doable. I don't know if they naturally start with luck. Yeah, they do. Positive luck at all times. Okay. One to one kills on this. We get the kill. That's good. Can you reach us? They can reach us, but that's fine. I think I'm fairly happy just to take the retaliation there. I can, I can in fact, just completely block them off. I'm going to take these out. Okay, so we're going to win the fight, so panic over. Didn't actually need the gnolls. There we go. Okay, so we've opened up the middle now. There's lots of stuff to explore here. Um, Trailblazer's worth visiting at the start of the week. Okay, so let's explore as much as we can before our opponents arrive. Fancy's gonna go south. And then we have the green keymaster's tent. I'm not sure what that leads to yet. Or it might as well visit this. It's only going to benefit us for one turn, but still worth visiting, I think. Let's visit the sign, just see what it says. Turning minerals into gold, we work weekends. Visit our shop to the north on the road and then left. To the north on the road and then left. That's a hill fort. But to the south, there's a, a warlock's lab, which is presumably what it's referring to. I'm a bit confused by that. Okay, let's, uh, let's go in this direction for now, and we can aim to dig up the grave at the end of next turn. 
We're at the start of the turn after next turn. Uh, 4,500 gold in the bank, can potentially go for the Citadel. Which would be fairly worthwhile, I think. Worth recruiting another hero. So we're blocked off from going any further south by some Corsairs, which are pretty hard. Pretty tough creatures. Don't think we're going to have much luck there. Let's send more to the west though to help Rissa out. Not sure about that. We do still have um, quite a few heroes able to move, so we don't have to spend anything just yet. Get basic scholar. So we need to get some experience and Jedi. And then we can pass over Resurrection to Rissa. And... I would really like to go for that Behemoth Crag, but it feels like a terrible idea. Uh, what I could potentially do, of course, is um, alt-tab out of the game and look it up. I'm actually pretty tempted to do that. I think it's worth knowing whether that's actually doable or not. Right, let's send both of these along. And then Rissa can potentially go through here just to check it out. Might help us plan. Okay. That takes us to the middle. Gotta fight some Corsairs to get through there. Don't think we're gonna be wanting to do that anytime soon. Also takes us to another place. Uh, there's actually a pyre there. This is towards the south of the map. So I know there's gonna be another player right in this area. And then presumably the third player is to the northwest. This could be worth exploring. I think I'll pick this up so that we go above the 5,000 gold mark. And we'll take these on just because it's an easy fight. No loss is expected. Let's visit this, which reveals actually a stronghold town. So all the more reason to pick up some behemoths potentially. Okay, this is getting pretty interesting. Uh, obviously a pyre too that we could potentially go for. And uh, lots of gold available to the north. If we can just break through some beholders. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, if we look to the south, we've got some archangels which are guarding the plate of dying light and a few resources. Don't think that's going to be worth going for. And Nyx Fort should be more manageable if we do want to take the fight. And no sign of our opponents, although there is a fortress town right towards the southeastern corner of the map. A quest gate guarding some resources, some enchanters potentially. Okay, that's very interesting. It looks like you can go onto the water as well. But I'm not seeing anything too appealing there. Quite a few teleporters. It's possible that you actually can't go onto the water because of course you can just get through to that island using the teleporters instead. Another teleporter there on the south southern edge of uh, our own starting area. That's a turquoise one. Looks very similar to the blue monolith, but it's not. I'm not sure where exactly that leads. Actually, it leads to here, okay. So we can get to here if we want to. Doesn't really look that appealing to me. Obviously, you can pick up the fortress town. We've got two months to win the map. I think that should be quite doable, considering we've already explored nearly half of it. Um, does also reveal a bit more of the the middle area so if we look here um, there's quite a few resources to pick up as we move in this direction with Clancy. The temptation to pick up another hero is only getting stronger. I don't think we're in desperate need of gold. I think that's a pretty strong argument. Going for Aegit because Aegit's trogs are slightly faster than Straker's Walking Dead. Let's pick him up and let's go ahead and get the Citadel. And I'm still so torn on the Behemoth Crag. I might seriously have to alt-tab to figure that one out. 
but I do want to send Aegit to the central island because once we break through to the south here, I'm probably going to send Clancy to the east and Aegit to the west. Rissa, meanwhile, can go for the town if we want to take on some Ogre Magi. I think we could probably win that. Pretty difficult creatures to fight. Take the plus one luck. Is it this too? Basic Scholar again, we're going to say no. This is going to be a tough fight. Low morale could be a problem. That's completely open though, so as soon as we break through we can just take the town. Let's go for it. Okay, we're expected to win. Even from the auto resolves, that's a good sign. Uh, we've got 20 spell points, so we can cast Magic Arrow four times. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, pretty fast. See if we can distract them with the trogs. Yeah, I think it's worth dragging these guys down. Actually bringing all of them down by the looks of it. Okay, so we're going to be forced to shoot, which is kind of unfortunate. We're going to have to go for these. But actually, I think we'll do more damage to these. Can potentially send these out, but it's a bit too risky. Defend instead. I'll wait with these because I think they go with the Trogs instead. They're going to bloodlust those, I'm going to shoot them, make sure they don't do too much damage. You guys are going to defend. I can take one of these out. The other, and then move back. guys can't reach us this turn. And these guys are in range, so let's go for them instead. I'm gonna wait with these for now. No more spell points, but that's fine. I think we're going to be completely safe here. Oh, now I jinxed it. I really jinxed that. That's bad. Okay, let's see. Can we rescue our gremlins and prevent any more losses? Yeah, we can. Okay. That kind of sucks, but okay. It's worth it for a town. Um, basic earth magic, I'm obviously not going to pass that up, even though I'm very much enjoying mysticism right now. Take the town. Uh, which starts off with a resource silo. Though it's not the most useful type. Well, it starts off with a Cyclops cave. Okay. That's very interesting. Is it worth staying in the town, or should we just move out? So if we do this, we can recruit Cyclops immediately. This guy's going to cost us a little bit more. There's no mage guild here. So we don't need to stay. Starts off with a market. I think that's part of the map's gimmick. And then we've got just enough for another rock. I'm still not sure this is enough to take on some behemoths. Also pretty tempted to go to the Moleto Tower. There's very few movement points, all things considered, so I think we might as well do it. And do start off with a tavern here. 
so I can send up send out some scouts, but we already know just about everything that we can get to. If I want to spend the gold to sacrifice a hero, I can. That's a bit less cheesy than alt having out. I don't really want to do that. I mean, obviously, if I knew, I knew. And some people would know, and some people do know, who are watching this video know exactly what I'm up against there, but I, I just don't know personally. I would prefer not to Google it. Okay, within a turn. Still no sign of our opponents. End of the first week, so we're an eighth of the way through the map. Uh, but we've already explored half of it, and we're picking up lots of resources. We're only gaining momentum, so... Going fairly well so far. Just pick up everything we can. As uh, Actually, it looks like we're blocked off by the Crusaders here. Okay. It's kind of bad. No way through. Gonna have to go west. Which makes me think... Might not be worth sending Agit through. Uh, is Oris strong enough to take on lots of familiars? It's kind of borderline. So in that case... We're going to send Agit. Pick up some gnolls. And we'll continue to explore around here. If we go there, I don't think we can get back. Yeah, I don't think we should risk that. We want to be stood here at the start of next turn so we can dig up the grave. And then Arisa, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure what the Junkman does. But I'm sure we could win that fight. It might prove to be worth it. Tree of Knowledge up there, I don't think we're going to go for that. It's not too important. Um, I should probably break through these. Could recruit another hero here just to pass over some creatures to Rissa. I don't really think we want to bring the gremlins to this fight. But yeah, that's definitely worth going for. That's uh, a hell of a lot of gold there. I think each warehouse of gold is 2,000 gold per week. We can obviously reach one this turn. So that kind of pays for itself. Go ahead, let's get spin. And let's take all of the weaker and slower creatures. Spread these out. Go ahead and hit these. Not many losses expected. I've actually built few enough buildings in the starting town that I could actually go full stronghold instead of tower if I wanted to. These guys we can reach pretty easy. Even so, I think I'd rather go for the beholders towards the top first. You go forward, try and bait some shots. You weaken these. And you guys are going to defend. Okay, they're going for the main stack. I think I am in full range there, so taking a few losses. These guys have already gone. And it costs us four spell points to cast magic arrow now, so definitely worth doing whenever we get the chance. You guys wait. I'm gonna keep them out of the fight in fact. Okay, and that's going to open up the Warehouse of Gold. Um, 
I'm not sure if it's going to be worth sending Rissa up here. Experimental shot is a pretty tough fight. They buffed it as well. Start of the year, the new patch. Added steel golems to it, which are a lot faster than the other types. So, can't really kite them. Don't think we're ready to take that. Um, in theory, probably don't actually need Rissa to take on the familiars, but they're not too much further. So we might as well go for it, I think. Brought the wrong army with me. Didn't mean to do that. Did actually mean to take the gremlins back, but never mind, it's going to be fine. So these are pretty fast in this terrain, they're actually faster than us. Still wait just in case they come forward for some reason, which they don't. Worth baiting them just to go for the attack on us. I think it is. They shouldn't get a kill. So they're gonna come forward, do absolutely no damage, we get the kill. And I'm hoping that Spint can reach this without us needing to spend any extra movement points. Which he can. He can in fact reach both of them, so that's good. Try and preserve his movement points if we can. Visit this, and we can, in fact, visit both this turn. That's good, that saves Rissa some movement points. Uh, 6,000 in the bank, and we're going to get 2,000, in fact, 4,000 immediately next turn. And that's going to help us a lot because I'm sure from my test run that one of these two asks for a lot of gold. Uh, which we will find out with Oris turn after next. But I think we have had a pretty good crack at this now. I hope the microphone quality has not been too unbearable. Um, there's not really much I can do about that at the moment. But um, yeah, it's an interesting map. I hope it's been interesting so far. And uh, next time we will be continuing to expand and making that decision about the behemoths. Obviously, because I'm ending the episode here, I will look it up and see if that's actually doable or not. I think Rissa. Actually, probably can't reach that by the end of the turn, so it looks like our decision has been made for us. But yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, do check the playlist link in the description where you can watch the whole thing in one go. Uh, and if I've not got round to uploading any further parts yet, then you can, of course, subscribe to the channel and catch them as they are uploaded. But yeah, thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.